Any questions? No, we're good. No questions. All right, very good. So again, I have here four slide sets. And these four slide sets is gonna be taken, these are taken from the course 301. 301, as you see here, and as you guys familiar with it, it's gonna be mechanics of materials and includes analysis of beams, axial stresses, fluctual stresses, and then at the end you have this combined loading, combined stresses. What's combined stresses or combined loading? This is when you have an axial loading and some moment with it. Like in this case, in a case like this, you have a beam exposed to axial compression or tension. And this usually happens in columns, so that you understand what I'm talking about here. In a case like this, you have a column and then you have an axial load. And this axial load is not in the dead center. It's kind of, there is some offset as you see here. So at the bottom of this column, you're going to see axial force coming from this 150 pounds and some moment coming from the eccentricity. What does it mean by eccentricity? It means that this load is offset. It is not right in the dead center. So the distance, which is this five inches from the center of the column to the point load, this is what you call here eccentricity. If this point load here had been right in the center, we'd have called it concentric column. But in a case like this, we're going to say eccentric column because it supports eccentric loading. So in a case like this, you're going to see that we have, as you see here, we have stress distribution that's going to be based on this equation that you guys have studied before. So this is the reason that I want you guys, before we go through the course, before we go more in depth, that you studied this four slide sets and be ready with it. You guys have an access to this four slide sets? Please let me know. Do you? Yes, Professor. You have it? What was the name of them? Um, let me show it to you again. You're going to see additional materials. Can you see that? Additional materials? Yes, we do. OK, good. So you have your general. You're going to have the syllabus. This is the link to the office hour, link to the classroom meetings. And then you have lectures. This give you the slide sets. And then you have additional materials. This includes anything else in addition to the slide sets that I'd like to add. I'm not going to be putting in here. I'm going to put them in a separate section in this addition materials. We're good? Yes? No? Any questions? Yeah. All right, great. Now, I guess you have um, an idea about the material arrangement that we have on Canvas. And you have maybe a kind of idea about your midterms. And you understand that your midterms are usually going to happen on Tuesdays. And we have them here in the syllabus. We have the exact date and the review for it, right? So we have this give you March 8th and on April 19th. And here's the final. So you have the schedule, you have a kind of uh, a detailed schedule and you understand that usually homework is gonna happen, is gonna be due on usually Sundays. They're not gonna be on um, like in the following um, meeting. So for example, when I assign now a homework and I assigned the first one already, let me open it here for you. This is gonna be due on January 30th which is gonna be Sunday. So it's gonna be end of Sunday. And the first homework is actually, is gonna be based on structure analysis one. It is not really related to reinforced concrete design. And here I'm asking you to determine the reactions on supports. So here you have three reactions in this beam. Same thing, you have here three reactions. And here also you have three reactions. And also I want you to draw the shear Force diagram and the bending wall diagram. This gave you everything that you guys have studied previously in the structure analysis one. Structure analysis one, you have studied this and also in statics. So I want to be sure that you guys can be able to do it on your own. 
This moment diagram and this shear diagram for us, for reinforced concrete design, represents the demand, which means what moment and what shear you want your beam to support. Again, we don't teach this in 408. We teach how to find out the capacity or the trends of the beam in terms of axolot, shear, and bending moment. I guess I give you a quick idea about the course layout, the schedule, and what to expect during the course. Also, as we said that we are gonna have a project, and in this project is gonna be a kind of substitute to the homework. Whenever we have the project submittal, which is equivalent to a homework, there's not gonna be a homework then. So it's gonna be either project submittal or it's gonna be homework. It's not gonna be two in the same time. All right, I guess uh, I give you a quick introduction here. I'd like to go through you guys, if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us about your, um, your background. I know that everybody here is civil, but I'd like to see what major that you'd like to be interested in. As you guys know, when it comes to civil, civil is really broad. Civil engineering is very broad, right? So some people may be interested in construction, administration. Do you like time scheduling and project management? Others could be interested in geotechnical. It could be also environmental. It could be also public works like surveying and uh, highway design and layout and things like this. So I'd like every one of you guys introduce yourself quick and tell us um, which major within the civil that you're gonna be interested in. And if you are practicing engineering or any internship these days, let me know. I'd like to know which company that you are with what you guys do, give us an idea. This can help a lot later on during the course. Um, anyone can start. Hello, I'm Matthew, obviously a civil engineer, but I'm interested in construction, uh, more so constructional, uh, like planning and things like that. So I'm really excited for this class. Right, very good. Hi there, my name is Alexis Sandoval. Um, I just finished uh, my year and a half internship with Clark Construction, really good company. Um, they're a general contractor and I'm um, doing civil engineering. I'm interested in both construction and engineering. So I have backgrounds in doing traffic control plans and some other stuff. So yeah, I wanna see what else is out there that piques my interest. Did you witness Port of Concrete and did you see concrete? Yeah, yeah I, I emailed you earlier, Professor. Yes, I know. Wow, uh, huge pores and it's really cool and looking at plans and um and just really cool seeing, you know, all the moments and everything that we learn actually being applied by foremen and journeymen. Did you discuss the moment diagram of the foreman? <laughs> I was able to show my project manager uh the formulas and he was like no we, we it's too much for him <laughs> all right very good all right then next hunter go ahead Okay. Hi, my name is Hunter. Um, I'm interested in um, kind of a lot of fields, uh, more so public works. Uh, right now, I'm doing an internship with the city of Anaheim in their public works engineering, um, specifically in like development services. So a lot of uh, land development, land use, that sort of stuff. Um, Very good. Not super exciting, but it's good experience. Like you see plants, uh, grading, uh, like water, sewer, stuff like that. You still also use concrete in your work, right? What's that? You still use concrete. You use specific yeah. concrete, you see it in drawings. Yes, yes, yes. So it's going to be a good chance here to know what is behind there. Exactly. All right, thank you. Uh, Brad? Hello. Um, I actually realized a couple days ago because um, I haven't known what I want to focus on, but I think I want to do residential design, kind of single family home stuff. Don't know exactly what, but uh, I foresee that being one of the greatest needs of people and, you know, 
people need homes to live in and that's what I'm passionate about. So, and if I could design my own home in the future, that would be, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm leaning right now. Great. You know, for any, any building, usually the foundation is going to be made out of reinforced concrete. And yeah. And actually there, uh, my church is currently like about to pour a bunch of concrete. So I'm trying to get in and watch them do it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, houses too, for sure. Yeah. So is it going to be a good chance for you? Because you can see here is strip footings and wall footings. And this is actually what we use below uh, residential buildings. And if you have a little bit of a larger project like residential, which you'll do one day for yourself, you're going to see that you have um, isolated pads for spread footings. And you're going to see here in this course, how do you design it? What are the equation needed, equations needed? And you'll do it yourself. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Hamad? Yes, Professor. My name is Hamad Amarfodi. I am a student with a scholarship. Actually, I'm not sure right now. Maybe houses, because we have a problem in our countries about houses. So I thought doing houses is good. OK. All right. Uh, Samantha? Hi, I'm Samantha. Um, I'm still pretty open. I hope hopefully to work in public works or geotechnical, but I haven't really decided yet. I'm still pretty open with it. All right, thank you. Do? Hi, I'm Do Jun. I'm mostly, mostly interested in construction, but I'm also open to all the other stuff as well. Great, Isaac? Hello, I'm Isaac. Um, I'm still undecided right now, but I think I'm leaning more towards public works. All right, John, John Fan. Hello, I'm John. I'm thinking of going into the environmental aspects with either soil or um, something with water, with water treatment. Yeah, all right. Um, Yagni? Hi, I'm Yagni. Um, um, I have my background in architecture and I'm currently pursuing construction management. Uh, so this was one of my prerequisite, this subject. Uh, so I'm interested in construction management. All right. Thank you. Jacob? Uh, hello, I'm Jacob and uh, I'm interested in like transportation and like urban development. Okay, Jacob. Ryan. Uh, hi, my name is Ryan, and uh, I'm currently interested in either structural or geotechnical. Which one do you think is going to win? Structural. Uh, or I, I'm not sure yet. Right now, I'm looking to land an internship in structural because that's what uh, interests me more right now. But I don't know. I just want to get a feeling for both of them and see from there. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Matt Moreno. Hi, everyone. My name is Matthew. I currently work at a civil engineering company in Corona called k and and I've been there for about, say, four years, and our main focus is uh, land use and land development, so developing sewer and water plants, street plans, roof grading plans, storm drain plans, erosion control plans, mainly just everything to for the development of a commercial or residential site so yeah okay very good thank you um alex alexander flores hi my name is alexander or alex um i'm more into the public works uh not sure exactly where exactly in public works but if not that um i was thinking of going into um like sewer works and stuff like that. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mia? Hi, um, uh, my name is Mia and I am interested in um, structural and uh, um, environmental engineering. Um, in both of them? Because usually environmental is 
the other uh, side either or I i'm okay. still like exploring all right okay good luck with that uh, amir um hi i'm interested in construction i did an intern with um, znk construction for just a month we did some roads and curbs in lake forest here um was it fun the, uh <laughs> it was fun okay it was nice okay thank you andres andres Andres. Hi, uh, hi. My name is Andres, and uh, I'm interested in the con construction field, especially like building houses or something like that, because it's something that I've been doing for almost twenty years. Good. So, what do you do, Andres? Uh, framing uh, and a lot of more things of carpentry. Okay. Very good. All right. Concrete is gonna help you out. Thank you, you. you know the whole thing all together. Well, I already know how to mix concrete, so. <laughs> yeah, but that was going to be Dan Nelson, <laughs> the bad that, part. That, that's what I want to do, the, the light work, not the hard work. I already done that a lot, so like, I'm over it. OK. okay. Uh, Tintin? Hi, uh, my name's Tintin, and I actually got a, a little taste of construction and traffic control in the and the city hall I visited, but I'm leaning towards more in construction. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, Jesus. Hello, my name is Jesus. Um, I still don't know what I want to do with uh, with civil engineering, but I might just do construction. I see here lots of people really like construction. Yeah, thank you. Abdullah, Saleh. Are you there? Edwin? Hello, Hi. my name is Abdullah and I'm from Kuwait. I'm interested in project management. All right, Edwin. My name is Edwin, and I'm interested in construction or environmental. Um, I hope to decide that this semester. All right. Uh, Matthew Horner. Yeah, I went first, Professor. OK, All right. Who's left? Hi, my name is Mirage. Can you, Professor? Uh, all right, with the end, go ahead. Hi, my name is Maraj. I'm interested in structural engineering. Right, how come? You're the only person who just said it. This is gonna be the only thing for you, right? Yeah, uh, I'm a graduate student and it is my prerequisite. Uh, and this is my first semester. Okay, very good. Uh, are you more interested in concrete or steel design or wood? Sorry? Are you interested more in steel design or concrete design? Uh, concrete design. All right, thank you. Now, Vidyan. Hello, everyone. My name is Vidyan. I'm interested in construction or like designing home from inside, frames, like still I didn't decide. All right, very good. Anyone left or we are done? Uh, hi. Um, I'm Ryan. I'm interested in public works and transportation engineering, but I'm interested in, I'm pretty open to all the other like areas. Yeah. All right. Just, you know, I see here lots of people that, um, I'm going to say here construction, they like construction. And just, you know, all the money is in construction. It's not in the design phase. Usually it's getting construction, but, um, from day one, I worked first as a contractor, and then I decided to change and be a designer because actually I like the design phase. I like um, the structure analysis. Um, 
it is more liability just you guys know in the structural design. And there is no enough structural engineers. I don't know if you guys know this or not. In order for you to be a structural engineer, it takes a lot. Um, structural engineer, this is the what we call here the SE. Let me show you this. At least you understand what I'm talking about. Not in here, maybe in here. Uh, which is this SE, right? So P is a professional engineer, right? PhD is a doctoral degree. And then this professional engineer that you need to take some exams to pass it and references. SE is giving you the next step to be a structural engineer, which is the highest registration that you can have as an engineer, not just as civil. And with the SE, with the PE, you should be able to design a house um, like anything up to, let's say, about maybe eight story building. But with the SE, you're going to be able to design high rise building and you're going to be able to do uh, design a school and hospital. So as a PE, you cannot design a school or hospital or high rise. Uh, any water planet, any storage, any tanks, any bridge of any size, PE should be enough. But SE, with the SE, you can design certain construction, certain buildings. So is that you guys know. So uh, because we don't have enough structural engineers, actually, this is going to be our market. Nowadays, this is our market. So if you guys decide to go into structural engineering, I'm sure that there is plenty of jobs open now. You know? uh, so uh, the PE is like, uh, it's kind of for like uh, a, a small structure. Um, the PE, no, actually the PE, um, in order for you to work as geotechnical engineer, first you need to have a PE, and then after that for geotechnical is going to be GE, like G for geotechnical E engineer. Oh, um, if you need to get a EIT yeah. first. EIT, uh, yes. EIT or FE, fundamental <laughs> engineering, comes before that. You need to take it. And it's going to be very important for you guys to take it, whether you're going to be in construction field, geotechnical traffic, EIT is going to be very helpful. Also, lots of traffic engineers that I know of, they have the PE license. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be working transportation, you need PE license for highway alignment. If you're going to be also doing civil and public courts, you need to have PE license. So this can be a must uh, for engineers, except for construction. In construction, EIT is going to be good. PE is going to be like, this is very strong. Why aren't you doing design? Because you have the PE license, you know? Uh, construction work, as you guys know, you start maybe as early as maybe six o'clock or five o'clock in the morning, and most likely are gonna go home maybe 4 p.m., so a little bit earlier. Um, in design, we start, let's say about eight o'clock, sometimes 7.30, sometimes nine o'clock, and then we finish by, let's say 6 p.m. or so. So it's different time and schedule. Uh, as a designer, you sit in the office, in construction, Maybe half the time you're giving in the field, half time is giving in the office, which is giving also in the field. So it's gonna be a different type of practice. My advice to you to decide, you really need to visit someone in his office or in the field and see what does he do in daily pages. Don't just listen to ideas and to people, what does he say, but go and see someone who's practicing and stay with him like a couple of hours and chat with him. Ask him, what do you guys do exactly? You don't wanna be surprised later on after it, let's say that you, you have chosen to be a structural engineer and then all of a sudden, oh, I don't like the calculations that you do. And just, you know, when we do structural engineering, we don't do lots of analysis by hand or calculator. We have software. So software is going to do it for you, but you need to understand your input and the output, how to understand it, how to interpret it, and how to put it in the drone. Uh, when it comes to construction, um, you need to be able to go like half of your time into the site, uh, put a hard hat, and put on protection glasses, you know, and all the gears and everything and be, be sure that you're ready for it and this is what you like to do. So I give my advice, try to visit someone who's really practicing, either in the field or in an office as an engineer designer and see what this is doing. Then after that, you decide. Don't rush it. Take your time for this. Thanks for the advice. What's that? I said, thanks for the advice. No, no problem, no problem. I personally like construction engineer. I decided after many years of working in construction, I decided to go and do analysis. <laughs> but it has also liability. It has lots of liability. So it's be under the gun, as they say, or under the mic. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
in this introduction here, that by now you guys have the slides set, you're gonna see the the topics that that I'm planning to cover in this course under the 408. First, we're working with the material, right? We call it reinforced concrete. It means that we have concrete and reinforcing. So we need to understand all the aspects of this material. Not the chemical composition because I don't care about it, but I care about the mechanical properties of this materials that I'm gonna be working with. Usually out of this concrete material and reinforcing, we're gonna be building concrete slabs. Slabs means elevated slabs. It could be also slab and grade. We're gonna be doing beams, we're gonna be doing columns. So we're gonna be having listed here. So in the first line here, when we come to design elements, it's gonna be beams and slabs. And then from time to time, once you attach the beam to a slab, we form here something that you call T-beam. So beams is gonna be the same as this beams, but it's gonna be a little bit different when it comes to analysis and design. If you like to design this beam here, in many cases, you put reinforcing at the bottom and then you put reinforcing also on the top. When you have top and bottom, we call doubly reinforced beams. So it is still a beam, but just about the distribution of the reinforcing. Also, we need to design this beam to resist moment and shear. So we're gonna have a section here or a topic on shear design of beams, of reinforced, reinforced concrete beams. The rebars themselves, we need to splice it, you know, you don't buy the rebar with the length that you really want it. You have a standard length when you buy it, right? So what happens if the beam is longer than the rebar length available? In this case, you need to splice it. Splice it means that you're gonna bring one rebar, put the other rebar like this, and the splice it to each other. We call this a splice, right? So how do you come up with the splice length? How much overlap that you need to do? This is what we are gonna be learning here, developing the splice. And then you need also to know where to stop the rebars. At what point that you don't need it is gonna be done here. When you pour the slab, you pour it with the beam. And then in some cases you pour it with the wall or the column. This is what we call here continuous construction design consideration. What's gonna happen? What's the difference when you have pre-cast elements versus cast in place elements? So in cast in place, you're gonna have continuity of the rebars continuity of everything. But when you have precast, it's gonna be completely different in element and animal. It doesn't mean that here in this course, I'm gonna be covering any of the precast or pre-stress elements, but just give an idea about it. Um, it is very important also that you understand when you design a beam for the strength, it means that you design it to be stronger than the demand that you apply to it. So for example, if you're talking about moment and then you say, here's a moment demand, then you say, okay, here's a moment demand. I need to have more moment capacity than the moment demand so that this beam is gonna survive. But this is not the only thing because in many cases we design beam to be able to support the loads, but the beam is gonna be deflecting a lot. You know, deflection means it's gonna be sagging down right? But still have enough strength. But the problem when it sags a lot, people's gonna be scared just to stay below this beam and everybody's gonna be just out of the building. So there is certain limits for deflection and vibrations. And this is what we call here serviceability. So it is true that everything here that you're talking about is gonna be about strength and capacity when it comes to the forces but also you got to be careful about deflection and how much deflection do you expect to happen and what is the limit for deflection in the code. Also, we need to cover a little bit about concrete wall design. We need to understand that, right? You know, when you have walls, sometimes you have retaining walls, right? You guys are familiar with the term here, retaining walls? Yes, no? This when you retain soil, right? Sometimes you have shear walls. The reason that we call it shear walls because we resist seismic forces like earthquake induced forces, forces due to the earthquake shaking of the building. So this is gonna be also part of the concrete walls. Also when you have columns, columns usually supports vertical load 
a little bit of moment. So we're gonna show you here how columns are designed. And then at the end, we're gonna have some foundation design. When it comes to the order of the topics, uh, maybe the footings is gonna be here, part of it here and part of it here. But generally speaking, these are the topics that you are planning to cover, not the exact order, but this is the order that, that makes sense to any designer or any engineer. Here's a little bit about discussion of this course project, what's gonna happen is gonna be, uh, it is not gonna be really in teams, but it's gonna be a person to a person. Uh, it's gonna be very similar to homework submittal. And the textbook that I'd like here for you guys to have a copy of it, either it's gonna be printed copy or, um, or um, electronic copy, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be up to you guys. But um, what I want you to understand is when there is any differences between the slide set and between the book, the slide set will prevent. Also, this code is gonna be very important for you guys. I'd recommend that you keep a copy of this, especially if you're gonna be in construction, a copy of the ACI is gonna be really important. This is gonna be the main source of any information related to concrete design. It's gonna be in this book. Now, in here, so Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, was that three separate books and are each of those required? I didn't totally understand. Um, this one is really required that you really need to have a cup of this. Okay. And this one, it would be great if you have a cup of it, if you like to read a little bit more. But anything that I cover in this course is given the slide set. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Everything, 100%. No problem. 100% of the information I need is given the slide sets. This includes examples, materials, conceptual problems, any discussion, any equations is given the slide sets, All right? Makes sense, thank you. No problem. Now, when it comes to software, you need to be a little bit exposed to some software. I don't want you to finish this course without looking at least at the software input and output. I'm sure that you guys hear about SAP 2000. Am I correct? Yes? Yes, yes. Shaking their head, right? Okay, good. So difference between SAP 2000 and ETAPS, they're kind of similar to each other, similar to RAM structure system. With this, you can do the structure analysis, which means that you figure out or determine the demand based on or using this software. So this software is just to do structure analysis for you, which you have learned already. This is something that you guys have taken already, the structure analysis, not the software, and you have seen it. So with this software, it's gonna make it easier for you. So if you are able to use the software, it's gonna be a big plus for you because when it comes to project, in your project, you're gonna have continuous slab, continuous beam. If you can do it with SAP 2000, this is fine. If you cannot, I'm going to have a design aid for you. It's going to help you out to figure out the moment diagram for continuous beams and slabs, right? So what is this PCA column and CSI column? This software and this software, the two software here, do you help you out to find out the strength for a concrete section? It is true it says here column, right? But you can use it also for beams. The most complex structure or element concrete member that you can design and work on is gonna be a column subjected to an axial load and moment. If you take the axial load out of it, it becomes a beam. So you can say a beam is the same as a column without an axial load, just have some moment. This is the reason that both of these two software systems, you can use them to determine the strength and the capacity of a given column or a beam. If you can have um, a version of the CSI, you can download it or any other software that you can find at any place. This would be a very good idea for you guys to have so that you see how easy this is gonna be to perform structure analysis and capacity of a given reinforced concrete member. So that you know that it is true that you're gonna spend here and we're gonna be taking some time. We'll do some effort to learn how to do it by hand. 
But at certain point also, I want you to be exposed to the actual practice, to the true practice, that we don't do lots of stuff by hand like the way that we see it in academic field. It's gonna be all the software. So I wanna be sure that you guys know exactly how practice is gonna look like after you're done. We have your distribution of the grade and the midterm date and weight. And also your final exam is given the 17th of um, May. Now, when we were talking here about concrete, now we're talking about materials, right? So the first thing that we said, we need to discuss the materials of construction. We have something called here plain concrete and we have another thing called reinforced concrete. Now, what is the difference between plain concrete and reinforced concrete? Like I guess the reinforcing, right? One concrete is gonna have some reinforcing, the other one with no reinforcing. You can say, yeah, this is true, but I'd like to add to it. Code says, if you have a structure member, let's say footing or a beam or a column, for each five of this structure members, you're gonna have a minimum reinforcement ratio. They're gonna say, well, your minimum reinforcement is gonna be this much in the column. Minimum reinforcement in the beam is gonna be this much. Minimum reinforcement in the slab is gonna be this much or foundation or a wall, right? So if you put some reinforcing, it's gonna be below the minimum required. We're gonna call it here plain concrete. And this is exactly what it says here. What's plain concrete? It's gonna be the concrete without reinforcement or with reinforcement ratio less than the minimum required by code. So I'm gonna say, which code are we talking about here? I thought the code is gonna be ACI 318, 2014, but all of a sudden I put here California, California building code. This says here CBC means California building code. 2019. So I need to explain this to you. If you like to go to any jurisdiction, to any city, and you like to pull a permit for construction, which is something very important for you guys to understand, since most of you is gonna be construction field, right? Or any civil engineering field, you need to understand what does mean by permit with the city or the county or the jurisdiction, whatever jurisdiction that you're gonna be working with. You go to the city and then you ask me, say, which code are you guys using that I need to follow? They're gonna say, well, it's gonna be CBC 2019, California building code. Maybe some of you, you heard already about something called international building code, IBC. So let me type it here. You can say here, what is international building code? I'm gonna put it right here. IBC. Which year IBC? 2018. So what happened? California, state, the state of California, they took the 2018 IBC, they did a little bit of changes to it, and then they called it CBC 2019 or 2019 CBC. How about in Nevada? What does he call it? In Nevada, they don't have Nevada building code. Instead, they have the IBC. They just strictly use the IBC, the main code. And here in California, we decide to do some changes because the seismic team, because we have here seismic, um, big seismic issues in the state. How about other states? Well, it depends. In many states, you just use strictly the used the IBC. When you go to city of LA, city of LA, they don't use the CBC. You take the CBC, they modify it, and then you call it city of LA building code. When you go to any city within the county of LA, they call it LA County building code. This means that any city can just take the code and call it the, the way they want it and just do the changes they want, it, right? It depends on jurisdiction. This is what we call jurisdiction. So the CBC here, once you open it, you go to chapter 19, it's gonna be about concrete design. This chapter 19 of the CBC is the ACI, 318 2014. It is the code that we were talking about. Are you guys following me? So, where is the ACI here? The ACI actually is going to be a section or a chapter of this code. And the ACI book itself is thick. It is not a small book, it's a thick book. So, you'll find out that all of this concrete section is actually a part of this chapter 19 of the CBC. So, when you open the CBC 2019, you look for chapter 19, you're going to see a few pages. It's not really big. And just say, take the ACI 318 2014 and use it. 
So instead of bringing the book and copy the game, put a copy inside the CBC, they just say, the cross-reference the ACI 3T. So if you are planning here to do the CBC 2019 in your design or IBC 2018, let's say that you're in the state of Nevada, what you need to do in the concrete design, you bring the ACI 318 2014 and use it as chapter 19 of that code. So the main code or the mother of the code, right, is going to be either this or that. And the ACI is going to be a chapter of it. Also, the wood is the same thing. The wood is given chapter, let's say 22. It's going to be based on the NDS, 2016, for example, or 2015, right? Same thing with structure steel. With any construction material, you're going to see that each construction material is going to be one chapter under the CBC. Any questions? We're good? It's so, okay. Plain concrete. What is the standard use for plain concrete? You say maybe some slab and grade. Concrete pavement, right? We don't really, I mean, in a case like this, I understand that in many cases we put some reinforcing to reduce the amount of shrinkage cracks, but in many cases they don't put in reinforcing. I'm sure that you guys, whoever worked in the, in the field of public works, and you guys you have seen concrete, right? For slabs and stuff like this, most likely the reinforcing is very little. Almost no reinforcing is gonna be very light. In reinforcing concrete, you're gonna see plenty of reinforcing here that you're gonna be able to identify when it comes to concrete. What is the concrete is made of? It's made of cement and aggregate and water and some admixtures. So three components. You can call here four components. Cementitious materials like cement, for example. You can have here aggregate, which is fine aggregate, sand, coarse aggregate like gravel or rock. You're gonna have water to mix it with it, and you're gonna have some admixtures. This admixtures is to enhance the properties of the concrete. For example, if you really would like to gain higher trends of the concrete, like early strength, there's that mixture for that. If you decide here to reduce the amount of water, there is a mixture for that or an additive to the concrete. And with that, you can reduce the amount of water. So when you reduce the amount of water to bring it to the optimum ratio, which is roughly 0.45, I'm sure that you guys have studied this in materials, what's gonna happen in the case like this is gonna be very hard to work with the concrete. It's going to be very tough to put it in the form, and it's going to be also very tough to vibrate the concrete. In a case like this, we have an additive or a mixture to increase the workability of concrete. So all of these admixtures or additives, it is to enhance the concrete properties if you decide to go without them. Like what? Like, again, workability, early trends, and lots of other things that you can gain once you're adding one of these admixtures. Again, when you go into the chapter 19 of the CBC, you're gonna say that it adopts the ACI 318 2014. And then there's a couple of chapters here is gonna be really important that you look at. And we're gonna be including all of that into our slide sets. The type of cements that you should expect. We have two common types. This is what you see here in the market. We have cement type two and cement type five. Look at this, type two and type five. This gave you cement type two and cement type five, which is the last one. Type two is like the general use. Type one, you don't really see it. And type one A, you don't really see it in the market. So the two types that you see in the market is gonna be this type two, this gonna be the regular cement. If you go to any place, you'd like to purchase cement, you call it the Home Depot, you go to a, a concrete supplier, this is the cement they have, like the standard, the regular. If you have here any sulfate, and usually we do this, if the source reports requires us 
to have type 5, which is this high sulfate resistant cement, then it's going to be very important that your concrete is going to be made with this cement. Use it a lot. If, let's say if you have um, a house, it's going to be close to the beach or any building. Of course, it's going to be type 5. In many cases, in chemical plants, like uh, in uh, um, like factories, we usually use this type 5. Type 5, a little bit expensive than this, but not much, maybe 5%. So it is not really expensive. In many cases, if you don't know, because the source report is not clear, usually for foundation would go here with type 5. When it comes to the final strength and design analysis for us, it doesn't matter. The two types would give you the same strength, but it's going to be about the performance, right? This is going to be resisting here chemicals and, and sulfate. This one is kind of the resistance not going to be that much higher. So the problem here is the sulfate, if it penetrates the concrete, is going to deteriorate the concrete and then is going to cause rusting of the rebars. So you don't want this to happen. So what happened? You're going to have your high sulfate resistance cement. The cement that you are going to be using is going to be all under this Portland cement. And this Portland cement follows the requirements for the specifications of the ASTM C150. So I'm going to say, what does ASTM stands for? ASTM is American Standards for Testing and Materials. There is a difference between a specification and a code. So in the previous slide here, when we were saying the code, Code here, it gives you the minimum requirements to design a building. Specification is different. Any ASTM specification means a piece of paper that includes all the requirements to call the cement a cement. So for example, in order for you to call this cement Portland cement, you go to the specification ASTM C150, it gives you all the chemical composition, all the physical properties and all the mechanical properties of this cement. So if you bring any powder, right? Because cement is like powder, right? Unless you have this hydraulic cement. If you bring any powder and you like to call it cement, you need to follow all the requirements included in this ASTM C150. By the way, we have the same thing for any PVC. In order for you to bring a piece of material or a steel or rebar or whatever, or a stainless steel piece, how do you call this a stainless steel and not just an alloy? You need to follow the requirements provided in this ASTM. So any material on earth that you can use in construction and also in non-construction applications, you're going to see that it has one of these the ASTM numbers. So for that, our cement would follow the ASTM C150. I guess we came here to an end. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, please type your name in your way to sign out in the chat box. Go ahead and type your name and you can leave. If you have any questions, please hang around and wait and ask your questions. Thank you, Professor. Thank you and see you next time. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. I think that's everyone. How are you doing, Professor? How was your new year? Very good, very good. How about you? Uh, it was good. Very quiet. Uh, it was, yeah. we, we didn't leave and it was amazing because we just stayed in the house and, you know, we just stayed here and it was great. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for, um, for uh, accepting my, uh, for me to get into the class, uh, you know, I I was on at academic probation when I was, uh, when I first started with your class and I'm on the second. tail. Give me okay. A um,